Jai Hind, welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. The recent events in Afghanistan have told us only one simple thing. No matter what actually happens inside Afghanistan, a lot of impetus and a lot of encouragement would have been given to a lot of terrorist groups that are operating in this region of the Indian subcontinent. We've seen certain statements coming out of Al Qaeda, statements coming out of the ISIS, statement coming coming out of Pakistan's nemesis, which is the PTP, and of course small jihadi groups which operate in the local region of Kashmir. To discuss all this, I have with me Lieutenant General Dushan Singh, PVSM, AVSM, a former commandant of the Army War College, a former DIG and the IG of the NSC, NSG and a counter-terrorism expert. Thank you, sir, for joining me today for this discussion. And uh, it'll be great to have your insights on the activities that you'll get emboldened by the events in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you, Aarti. Uh, good to be back with you. A uh, very good evening to everybody. Sir, so first on the list, I'm going to take up uh, the groups that actually affect India. One is, uh, you know, the the groups that are based in Pakistan, like the Daesh Muhammad then you know, Lashkar-e Toiba and so on and so forth. We've heard reports of these fighters going into Afghanistan for training. I'm sure there's a little bit of cross exchange of weapons and other equipment that are coming out. What do you think in the current scenario in the next, let's say, about, you know, a year or something like that, because it'll take them about six months to stabilize. But beyond that, do you see any focus of the Taliban to give some support to these kind of groups operating against India? And would these groups kind of change their location from the Indian attack uh, radius into Afghanistan, which is going to be a sovereign nation? Uh, Adi, uh as far as uh, pak based terrorist groups are concerned uh, they have had a dual focus uh, especially two groups uh, let and the jaish e mohammad uh, these are the two groups which have actually fought under the umbrella of uh, tariq e taliban pakistan uh, also and as also uh, directly intervened and uh, uh, fought their uh, war in afghanistan as well a very interesting fact is that LT on paper has never allowed its fighters to actually go to or militants to go into Afghanistan. What they have been doing is they have been giving them leave, a kind of a payroll, and based upon which they are allowed to do whatever they want to do, do during this period. And there's a reason ah. for it. Uh, the reason is that the LT and JEM are actually controlled directly by the ISI. These are the only two groups which actually do not take any, any step or action unless the ISI approves of it. So they have found ways to circumvent the ISI as well in case if they want to divert their fighters. That is one. The second thing is about the jaish e Muhammad. Uh, jaish e Muhammad is, uh, is a family-owned business of Azhar Masood. Uh, the entire uh, group is controlled by the family of jaish e Muhammad. But in the year of 2007 or 8, it split. It split into two parts with one part favoring going to Afghanistan and fighting for liberation of Afghanistan from the American, uh, American rule. That was the stated position. And the second group wanted to continue to fight uh, in the JNK, or rather, uh, uh, continue to remain focused towards uh, what they call as liberation of Kashmir. Uh, somewhere, Azhar Masood got uh, diverted, and he actually favored going towards Afghanistan. But then the ISI brokered a uh, brokered a kind of a uh, arrangement of again the whole group joining together, and then they started. Focusing back on Kashmir, if you remember from 2014 onwards, jaish e Muhammad again surfaced and it surfaced in a big way by the Pathan Court operations, uh, Pathan Court attack, Pulwama attack. In fact, the uh, intensity and the nature of attack of jaish e Muhammad has been far, far more uh, dangerous vis-a-vis -vis LET except the Mumbai attack, which was actually a which was actually a mother of all attacks. Mm -hmm. But by and large, you find that LET and Jesse Muhammad 
both have been focused towards india its fighters go and fight either under the umbrella of tehreek e taliban pakistan or directly under either hakani network or any of the other groups isk or aq which are operating in uh, or taliban itself which are operating in afghanistan so technically speaking you're right if the situation in afghanistan stabilizes where will these fighters go their natural destination would be kashmir while taliban has given a statement stating that its soil will not be used uh, for any of for any terrorist operations uh, i don't know whether you are aware or not uh, azhar masood went to kandhar about a week back yes and uh, sought help of taliban for liberation of kashmir taliban has for the time being refused it my sense is it is waiting for international recognition yeah once it gets the international recognition i think and i'm sure i suppose it will start supporting groups which are fighting the infidels as per as per uh, their vision of things you know they expect the entire uh, islamic caliphate to spread right up to southeast asia so so you are you are right i think we will see more of uh, terror attacks once taliban is uh, stabilized and recognized by the international community hmm then they will be able to create the channels of communication channels of transportation of weapons and this and that yes their their concentration is a little off hand sir but it's very interesting you said that uh, you know the let and the jem have kind of formed you said that they were very close to the you know the taliban faction of uh, pakistan which is very ke taliban pakistan which gets them into bed with the afghan Tal- taliban so it's basically one a uh, big amalgamation of various different uh, you know organizations what for their own purpose with a probably a central uh, not a leadership but something in common would you agree to something like that sir uh, actually uh, let me first explain the afghanistani uh, terrorism uh, landscape then everything else will fit into it so as far as afghanistan is concerned there are uh, basically three major groups which were indulging in fighting the us forces and the afghan army afghan national army uh, first was of course taliban itself basically that was the bigger umbrella under which everyone was fighting but more importantly it was a sirajuddin hakani network which was which was the most dangerous of the two which was also part of taliban along with them there were two major elements which was isk Uh, the ISISK, IS, uh, ISIS Khorasan, and the Al Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, and not the Al Qaeda core. So, these three, four groups are actually were actually fighting the Americans. Reason being, the enemy was common till the Americans were there. That was the far, far enemy, and America is the far enemy. So why? while they may be not looking at each other very friendly in a friendly manner like isis uh, isisk was not in bed with taliban correct but america was the common enemy so therefore the 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 the, the actions or the incidents which isisk did somewhere contributed towards taliban's victory as well but once the vict- once the victory was achieved isisk has a stated goal that you cannot hobnob with the the western world taliban for its own uh, international recognition governance has to now depend on the western recognition also somewhere it was also felt or it is now being actually more or less touted that taliban 2.0 was actually propped up by the americans and that is how mullah brother was released from pakistani jail then he was brought into the negotiations at doha etc etc all this is not being viewed favorably by isisk they are very clear that anything linked to americans is their enemy and hence uh, they had undertaken that attack uh, attack in uh, kabul airport airport which was by far the second largest attack till now so as far as sirajuddin akani network is concerned its aim is also to seize power in afghanistan not only 
just support taliban in the uh, in the uh, liberation of afghanistan so therefore it is also looking or it's also seeking for power but it has very close relations with al qaeda and now here comes the surprise tehreek-e taliban pakistan tehreek-e taliban pakistan was actually a group which did not interfere into afghanistan it had stated that it will remain neutral in the fight in afghanistan hmm. and so therefore uh, taliban afghan taliban was not supporting tehreek-e taliban pakistan and the americans in fact Uh, almost decimated tehreek-e taliban pakistan by 2018 yeah. baitullah masood after that uh, his, uh, next uh, chap he also got killed in fact the third leader also got killed now you have uh, nur nurawali who is the uh, who is the leader of uh, uh, tehreek-e taliban pakistan he has played smart he has stopped based on the advice of al qaeda that is ayman ayman al jawari he has said stop folk stop targeting innocent civilians target target pakistan army if you want to but don't target innocent civilians that is one secondly he has said decentralize your group so uh, today what has happened is that tehreek e taliban pakistan has developed close relations with al qaeda with sirajuddin haqqani network who are actually supporting tehreek e taliban pakistan and hence the worry of pakistan isi chief look what is happening <laughs> we have been supporting sirajuddin haqqani for afghanistan and now haqqani is supporting tehreek e taliban pakistan also al qaeda is very actively supporting tehreek e taliban pakistan incidentally if you know tehreek e taliban pakistan was being funded by the nds afghanistan's uh defense ministry's intelligence wing mm-hmm. after all once the uh, government fell and you know people have disappeared left right and center that that funding etc has choked they say al qaeda is funding tehreek e taliban pakistan and sirajuddin haqqani network is sheltering these people in the eastern afghanistan area that is tehreek e taliban pakistan so at best what taliban might do to appease pakistan is that they will say okay we will not give you we will not give sanctuaries to tehreek e taliban pakistan rest you deal with it it is a hedging game being mm. played by taliban now against pakistan because i don't think taliban will accept overlordship of pakistan absolutely mm. and how it can prevent pakistan from from uh, indulging in this kind of a you know dictators dictating terms to Uh, Afghanistan is through these Keeping return pressure. return uh, leverages which it is trying to create in the name of Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. So if it get, keeps getting supported by these two elements, Al Qaeda and Sirajuddin Haqqani Network, Pakistan will see more of it. What you saw today, uh, blast in Kuwait. In the month of July, twenty six attacks have been undertaken by pa- uh, Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan against the Pakistani army. killing a lot of pakistani soldiers and hence you are right why isi chief is now running into afghanistan actually the that's what i was going to say so now when you actually put it like that a lot of the incidents that have happened in the past actually fall into a certain paradigm um if i may you know one is the visit of uh, isi chief which has been touted as the fact that pakistan is going to try and help the taliban making the government i strongly disagree because he's probably gone there with the intelligence of what is happening around and said boss you know this is what the information i have of these guys colluding together to hit us please help us out in this particular thing another thing that one realizes is why is the taliban put the haqqani uh, network people in charge of the security so that the, uh, the taliban can put the pressure back onto pakistan to keep them busy in their own areas so it makes a lot of sense so yeah. it's 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 a very interesting scenario when the taliban who's been uh, responsible and has taken the responsibility publicly for major attacks which were conducted within pakistan one of them was in karachi itself where the taliban you know the leadership came out and gave a statement that you are supporting america that's why and this is not this is about 5 7 years ago uh, from that point to coming to a point where they are allowing the pakistanis to call each other 
you know like cousins and brothers and there are of course statements coming out from the taliban as well which says pakistan is my second home how is this kind of you know coming up well i think uh, we uh, you will find double voices in any case in such a complex scenario there are groups which are still uh, in fact taliban uh, continues to remain indebted to pakistan for all the support which it is giving so therefore uh, therefore this uh, uh, the visit of isi chief has a little more meaning as well that you know this time round the taliban doesn't want a pocket of resistance open yeah. uh, afghanistan which may then create the problems for future uh, invasions if somebody has to take up afghanistan remember the americans were successful because through their special forces they entered from the area of northern alliance keeping their bases in the central asian republic and then they pushed their uh, operations towards kabul uh, something like this was developing there also uh, a few days back uh, the president of tajikistan honored masood and uh, the northern alliance uh, uh, lion of panjshir and rabani who was the uh, president during prior to uh, taliban first taliban rule as uh, the highest award of tajikistan so somewhere there was some movement developing to push northern alliance back uh into some kind of a confrontation which was viable confrontation against the uh, taliban so so this this isi chief's visit could also be with a view to give this kind of a support that yes uh, we will help you with all possible ways but uh, mind you this will be a slap to the americans because uh, americans have just taken up a base in pakistan and uh, if the pakistan army is doing this so either it can be with approval of the americans or it's a it's a it's a move behind the american back but on ground reality of terrorism or the terrorist groups is always long term and the long term is that tehreek-e taliban pakistan wants a secession from pakistan hmm. and for that they will continue to fight and for that if they have to hobnob with aq or isis or with sirajuddin hakani network they will do it correct so we will see uh, this kind of a dual movement jockeying for space will continue either through civil war or through uh, uh, geopolitics uh, so when you see geopolitics there would be some pro uh, pro uh, each other statements also made for example tehreek e taliban pakistan mufti noor wali uh, masood masood has uh, stated in pushto language that pakistani soldiers are dark and ugly we will never forget their crimes and we will free our land of this army <laughs> this is a statement and a video it's a video released on the social media by him none other than the amir of tariq e taliban pakistan it's quite personal it be, yeah so so and it is quite interesting that why such videos are surfacing there is another video uh, in which the same fellow is uh, that is noor wali is saying that pakistan army and its crimes upon its innocent nations of azad baluchistan azad pashtunistan azad sindhui desh is deplorable imagine so tehreek e taliban pakistan is not going to just give up like that there is something going to happen across the durand line in the next few months that's my take who wins in this battle of course the pakistan army is a much stronger army it might be able to suppress but it is not the same as the american army which could which could eliminate leader after leader of tehreek uh, e taliban pakistan uh, we may find some cross border so let's hope that the kashmiri militants get involved only in these areas and not move towards uh, india and uh, that's my take i think they will get uh, embroiled in this war which is being fought I agree with you sir Pakistan probably doesn't have the resources to actually you know fight this entire thing uh I was talking to somebody from Russia a couple of days ago and he mentioned a very interesting thing sir he said you know the Pakistanis are trying to pull a turkey so I asked him what did he mean by that and he said you know turkish uh, president when the syrian issue was happening he went to the european union and said listen we'll keep all the refugees you give us the money the pakistan is doing the same thing they just want you to take the refugees and take the money and they've, they've done, done it, it in the past yeah. they've done it in the past 
the 6 billion aid which which was given to pakistan it diverted uh, for its own use yeah so, so nothing new with pakistan it it runs with the hare and uh, hunts with the hound hounds very 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 common common for it <laughs> absolutely sir <laughs> so i'd like to move a little bit of the focus towards china uh china is going to be the if anything else is going to be providing a lot of the i won't say the financier because the chinese are not stupid enough to throw money into afghanistan the same way that the americans did uh, americans like to show their for the lack of a better word badappan by you know to rakhle ar you keep this and all that stuff there are a lot of lot of stories that are saying that the taliban was told that you can keep all this military equipment it's fine you can you know keep it for your own safety and security and all that americans have that you know big heart sort of a thing the chinese don't the chinese are going to demand tangible results in terms of the etim the east turkestan islamic movement which is creating quite a bit of bit, bit of a ruckus in xinjiang would it be actually possible for the taliban to take one of this fraction and kind of suppress it down because at the end of it these guys work on that islamic you know uh, uh, route and it may end up offending their other fractions as well Uh, you're right, but uh, you see, uh, Pakistan, for example, has kept quiet uh, as far as the Uyghur uh, activities are concerned, based on the Chinese uh, uh, request for not raking up this issue at international level, and also even in the in their uh, routine activities of supporting uh, terrorist movements across the uh, across their borders. but pakistan and afghanistan are two different situations afghanistan is still stabilizing it does not have a government so to say which has writ over everyone who or or i would say majority of its uh, section of the society mm-hmm. and the groups which are involved in the fight in afghanistan as far as again uh, you might feel that i am trying to articulate everything back to tehreek e taliban pakistan but there are but there are uh, there are evidence to prove that tehreek e taliban pakistan has had very close ties with multiple uyghur groups right uh, in any case etim is a name given by the chinese to a group of uh, terror terrorist uh, groups which are ex xinjiang and fighting for uh, independence of xinjiang but as of now they are involved either in afghanistan or they are involved in syria Syria. I mean, these are the two places where the ATIM uh, terrorists are actually fighting their uh, yeah. wars. But once the Afghanistan war finishes, these uh, terrorists would again uh, get freed up, and they would look at their primary aim, which is of uh, getting their country to be uh, liberated from the tyranny of uh, the Chinese. But the cooperation which it is getting from the TTP is something which is what is actually going to trouble the chinese it may give the money to the taliban but will ttp listen to taliban is a million dollar question because the last attack which took place on the uh, chinese uh, company workers which was in the month of july in which uh, uh, they lost a number of uh, chinese uh, people was actually undertaken by the tehreek e taliban pakistan on the request or behest of the etim group of ah. terrorists now so this cooperation this cooperation of ttp with the etim is something in my view which is going to overcome the talibani uh, angle which the chinese are trying to put or create and that so called dream of cpec continues to remain under threat because both the mouth and the exit entry and exit of cpec are under uh, a threat from the exit is under the baloch baloch and the tehreek e taliban pakistan threat with the etim in connivance the entry is in a disputed area where india has been raking up the voice especially in the north with the etim now trying to create problems through the wakhan corridor we can see what may happen so chinese are uh, hoping like hell that afghan taliban will be able to control the etim and tehreek e taliban pakistan to my view it does not seem likely to be so easy 
Hmm. And that is why I said the fourth big game has begun. The Chinese are smart enough; they will not intervene themselves with the boots on ground, but definitely they will try to proxy the Pakistanis to fight their battle. And that is why they continue along with the Russians to keep telling that the the soil of Afghanistan should not be used for terrorist movement. It is directly in their interest. Russians don't want the problem to come into the Central Asian uh, yes. republics, and the Chinese don't want it to come into the Xinjiang region. And the Pakistanis don't want to come it come into the uh, the uh, Durand line across the Durand line, and it will be in our interest. I don't have to give hints. What we need to do, of course. So uh, let's wait and watch. Is my uh, uh, suggestion. Let's see which side the dice turns finally. And wherever there is an opportunity, take it. Take it. first because the more these two countries and i agree with you more these two countries are busy with their own issues the less they will trouble us so you know if if india wants peace within itself i think these both uh, our neighbors need to be at a little bit of uh, entanglement within themselves yes, sir sir you know uh, the blast that took place at the the airport in kabul was claimed by the isisk the for the viewers that don't know the khorasan region is a very large region rep- represents parts of central asian re- republic you know so it's a very large area that that the khorasan is actually talking about you know when we see an attack uh, it's a wacky world and there's some somebody had written this where when a terrorist group has terrorist problem so it's 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 come to that today i want to know two things from you so one what was the purpose of this attack in in the on the kabul airport by the isis second how do you find the isis trying to swell its ranks knowing the fact that there will be some kind of disenchantment which will be coming out of the taliban which one can already see they were supposed to uh, form a government uh, on friday they have not done it till now probably obviously there are certain differences so there will be disenchantment which is there in this uh, group how do you see this entire thing for the isis k Okay, ISISK, as far as uh, this group is concerned, has not been uh, on the same page of Taliban. It has been, it has fought with each other. I mean, both have fought with each other for control of political, politically, and for control of territory. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, uh, not everything is not good with ISISK and Taliban. So, there is an element of rivalry between the two. That's for given. In fact, uh, Afghanistan Taliban. executed one of the leaders in august of isisk yeah in the jail in the jail itself so so the relations are not very very good the second issue is about the kabul attack there are two theories which are going out in the environment because nobody is really very sure whether the isisk has actually done it or somebody else has done it although the isisk has claimed it first theory says that within the taliban there are some elements which are out of control of taliban who in their exuberance to to you know uh, convey or convey a message that you know we we have defeated the americans conducted this uh, attack on the americans before they left for uh, left out left left afghanistan it's like the elephant has gone and uska pooch attack gaya hai final nail that hmm. yeah was the final nail in the coffin that's one theory but assuming that it was done by isisk uh, being an analyst we must look at both the sides isisk has lost all its leaders in the past uh, few years since its existence subject to i mean uh, due to the uh, drone attacks by the americans even this time round when this attack was claimed by isisk the americans within two days Uh, undertook a drone strike and killed two of uh, the ISISK leaders. That's what they claim that they were the uh, in behind this attack. But the group still remains intact. What are the reasons for it? ISISK, when it started getting uh, disintegrated because of concentrated attacks by the Americans, it has morphed itself from a spider organization to starfish organization. now what is a spider organization is basically you having ayman al jawahiri and rest of the guys mm-hmm. 
around it, you know. So I mean, Al Jawahari's network is a spider network as of now. Tehreek uh, Taliban Pakistan has also done the same thing. I remember I told you that uh, Noor has now uh, decentralized everything. So the disadvantage is that you may not have control. It's like a federal structure, but the advantage is survivability is very high. Lethality is very. So that is what the ISISK has done. It has it has around two thousand fighters. That's what people were saying. But what they are expecting is that uh, the hardcore elements of Taliban, who actually believe in the, uh, the strict code of Sharia, and also not hobnobbing with the West. Ultimately, all Sunni groups hate the West. So if Taliban somehow is seen as being projected by the Americans, I can tell you that will be the death nail of Taliban. Taliban will start facing what the Afghan National Army was facing. <laughs> Right, so that is one thing which may it lead to increase in the strength of ISISK. There may be defections from Taliban going into ISISK's ranks. That is that is the uh, that is the bigger uh, danger to Afghan Taliban, and that is why the Afghan Taliban is treading a very very uh, uh, very very cautious line of doing certain actions as per Sharia and also. Trying to open up certain things so that the international community gives it the uh, recognition. So I'm sure ISISK, being what it is, it will it will keep getting the fighters which it wants. Interesting, sir, because the ISIS never looked for international recognition. Whenever you know they did form that so-called country of theirs or caliphate of theirs in in, in the Middle East, they never you know kind of. Demanded anybody's recognition. Here is the Taliban who is looking for recognition, looking to get into the mainstream of the world. At least that's what they say. So it's it's an interesting paradox of a situation where uh, two like-minded souls are going across each other. So having said that, please, sir. Yeah, go ahead. So having said that, my my question is again going to you know talk about another side of the 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 terror groups which operate in Southeast Asia, which operate in Africa. um africa is kind of a forgotten continent daily basis there are massive attacks that take place there are abductions of children from africa how do you think this whole taliban issue will kind of uh, affect africa and southeast asia uh, adi actually if you see any event which takes place at the international level has an impact across the across the in- international borders when iranian revolution succeeded that was the beginning of religious terrorism starting all over the world this took up real speed when the soviets were defeated in afghanistan and that time you would have seen al qaeda growing up in a big way you found africa going up in flames whether it was nigeria whether it was somalia whether i mean you name a country in africa from where there was no uh, where there was peace uh, prevailing at that point in time except i suppose for south africa the rest of the countries there was ethiopia sudan congo nigeria i mean you name it everywhere this was there when the isis got defeated in syria and iraq you suddenly found the activity levels of all these groups started reducing you know people started getting discouraged hmm. with the defeat of us because i'm i why i'm saying it is the defeat of us is because that is how afghanistan taliban is projecting it and in my view elements are already there whether you take isis whether you take al qaeda core Al Qaeda core, in my view, is likely to re-establish its influence in Africa, and so will ISIS. Okay. Both have connectivities, Sudan, etc. Today, uh, I was just uh, watching the terrorism index. Ten countries are up there from Africa: Somalia, Kenya, Algeria, Angola, Burkina Faso, Mozambique, Democratic Republic of Congo. Mali, Niger, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Libya. What is this projecting to you? And I am not even 
uh, talked about Egypt, which was the fountainhead of Muslim Brotherhood, from where Al Qaeda and all these groups actually uh, originated. It. And we just had the color uh, revolution, which took place, Arab Spring, which took place few years back there. All that came down because of because of number of international events, which actually started giving an impression that terrorism was on the back foot. But with this kind of a victory, which uh, Afghanistan Taliban is proclaiming, my sense is Nigeria is going to Boko Haram is going to get up in a big way. Sudan, uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Somalia, even Kenya, which had controlled its uh, uh, Al Qaeda pro Al Qaeda groups, is now likely to see an upsurge in their uh, terror activities. Angola, Burkina Faso, Mozambique. Uh, so we are in for some troubled times. I call it as domino, the dominoes effect. It has been proved in the past, and my sense is it will be proved now also. Take Southeast Asia. Abu Sayyaf is still alive. Yeah. Abu Sayyaf is now suddenly will start getting sent to stage. So Indonesia and Malaysia and Thailand better be aware. Why I'm saying so is Indonesian and Malaysian society is highly moderate, highly modern, and and you know uh, I've seen in Indonesia nightclubs and things like that uh, very very popular. So rise of Nuruddin network. Again, people who are the sleeper cells in these areas coming back into life cannot be ruled out. So, my sense is Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia need to be need to be up up in their uh, you know guard as far as uh, terrorism is concerned, especially Indonesia. A lot of Australian influence is there, and uh, my take is. Southeast Asia will see a very, very, uh, a very, very uh, serious impact of this Taliban victory. Bangladesh, as you see, has already started uh, seeing voices of, you know, introducing Sharia laws, etc. There are number of uh, uh, number of public demonstrations which have taken place in Bangladesh. Such like voices may be heard in India also, or uh, not in that sense, but we have heard, especially in UP and some areas. People uh, trying to uh, trying to project Taliban uh, as a as a hero and, uh, and and also requesting people to adopt certain uh, adopt practices and also telling that uh, the Muslims should be out of the uh, I mean they should be allowed to practice the Sharia. Interesting, sir. So actually, that was my last question because uh, one of the things that the IS has been able to do, and we saw the emergence. Uh, of the uh, IS flags in Kashmir during the times of 2014-15, uh, during the peak of the stone pelting and all that uh, natak that took place after the IS came into power in 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 you know Syria, Iraq, in that region. So we know that there are certain sleeper cells which are here in India. There have been quite a bit of captures and kills that were done of these cells in Kerala. There have been a lot of arrests and a lot of investigation happening in J uh, in West Bengal. JNK, on the other hand, seems to be a little more quieter in terms of uh, the presence of IS compared to the other two states that I mentioned. UP has a little bit uh, of these activities coming out and there have been, again, a lot of actions which have been taking place. How do you see these sleeper cells uh, reacting to such a thing? Because... Uh, one of the biggest issues with these sleeper cells is that they get activated on certain things and they conduct their activities and damage quite a bit of stability in the region. How do you see this going forward within India itself, sir? Uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, uh, while ISIS uh, or Afghan Taliban may not directly influence uh, India or the situation in India, but the LET has a number of sleeper cells in the country. Now, these sleeper cells are kind of uh, not under intimate and direct control of their mother uh, organization. So, their actions can take place. And as per uh, my information, LET has sleeper cells right from America to Southeast Asia. That's and based on 
based on actually arrests etc which have taken place in virginia in the united states of america and also in india from uh, time to time varanasi has been one of the hubs uh, as far as up is concerned azamgarh varanasi that belt has a lot of uh, lt effect there in fact uh, some incidents also took place which were directly attributed to lt the indian mujahideens are actually now not existent but for such a group to re emerge is not very uh, uh, not a proposition which is of a which is unthinkable it can happen so therefore uh, i see in india uh, re emergence of such activities especially if taliban manages to achieve a sense of uh, stability and a sense of governance in afghanistan projecting afghanistan to be a, a successful model of achieving your aim following a terrorist uh, movement strategy if that happens so we have to see if the talibanis are able to convey to the diaspora or to the sleeper cells this kind of a outcome that your aim can be achieved by the route of terrorism then we will have problem in india but otherwise if the local uh, uh, internal internal security apparatus is good i do not see any major activities taking place uh, in the immediate future but in the uh, long run as as the situation in afghanistan stabilizes we need to be careful we need to be on guard because uh, the focus will automatically shift to us it's an easy it's an easy target yeah. it has an aim it has a name it has an objective goal everything is there for these people to come and fight for uh incidentally vilayat hind uh, is active uh, as far as the isis is concerned in india for quite some time it releases publications inflaming the uh, public in general who are interested in reading such uh, articles they ca- they are available in the social uh, platforms through dark networks similarly you have the al qaeda in, uh, in the uh, indian subcontinent also active in fact it got decimated in kashmir because of our uh, positive security actions which we took place o- operation all all clear etc had the uh, all out had the effect and uh, al qaeda's uh, impact was reduced al qaeda in the indian subcontinent uh, impact was reduced in kashmir we need to follow such an action such a such a strategy we cannot deal with them so, politically we have to deal with them in a security uh, paradigm security so. yeah. it has to be a central sort of a system where we are dealing with them they are probably be, not disconnected with each other it has to be sustained effort where the state and the central government both have to come on one page yeah, yeah, yeah. and fight this fight this as a national uh, uh, national threat and not as you know partisan uh, view of elections etc being seen as dampener to your activities against such elements absolutely agree sir as a matter of fact one of the biggest mistakes india will make is to politicize this entire thing because uh, um, you know this is if a whole country can fall the way it did fell then there could be a lot of reasons a lot of people may argue that us made mistakes and this and that whatever it was uh, if a whole country can fall to a bunch of ragtag terrorists for the lack of a better word or militants or terrorists or insurgents a lot of words have been connoted for these uh, guys of yeah. taliban a lot more can happen i absolutely agree with you uh, pakistan itself also has a lot of uh, issues which are coming out as as was brought about very clearly by jamdushan singh taliban is going to be in a very sticky wicket trying to keep the fractions together because all of them want their own this thing ab pakra kat gaya hai sabko kuch chahiye so if that mal is not given to that particular fraction there is going to be issues within afghanistan and one can actually see that happening uh panchir valley remains an open talk there are propaganda and one thing uh, i must say jan dushant and we've spoken about gray zone but these guys are both of them are playing the information warfare very very well absolutely absolutely uh, and which is a good sign for us to less, uh, learn lesson without yeah. fighting if we learn these lessons from such wars i think we will be better off uh, for our own uh, problems as and when they come up whatever said in answer they have learnt it properly and both the sides are putting it. out the right message they are doing it well yes 
so panchir is a open question this whole movement in afghanistan is unsettled this entire region from its close by neighbors to uh, you know countries in europe uh, we've seen another attack that happened claimed by the isis in new zealand uh, which is a far away country pretty much not unheard of in terms of social instability but things are still you know being affected so one as general dushan said we need to be on the outlook we need to be clear and clean with our efforts there has to be a bipartisan or multipartisan uh, effort towards controlling and containing this kind of activities within our country for our own peace and security and the last thing that i'd like to say which is a great takeaway for this entire region that india must ensure that there is instability in the adversities around it to ensure there is stability within within itself thank you sir for this lovely talk and uh, till another day another subject jai hind jai hind